Okay, so in the last video, we showed you how to do the function block and control basically the box going back and forth on the conveyor. Um, now, which is not very much a, uh, a common thing that you should be doing with function block because again, when it comes down to it, function blocks made for uh, much different controls and stuff of that nature. But we did show you how to actually understand logical implementation, which goes back to what I'm talking about here. Now I've, now I've redone the system and have it. I have it currently working off of uh, the ladder logic, which is what you should be using. So I'm going to increase the view, and so you can see this actually running a little bit better. Um, and that way we can shrink it down so you can get real size and understand the logic behind it. Um, so you, you can easily see the logic, right? So what I'm doing is I'm basically saying, okay, well if nothing is made in the very beginning I'm going to initiate the first system start right which the system starts going to move it in forward and the forward bit is going to take it uh, in the opposite direction and work off the photo eyes the photo eyes and then in that term will control they will assume this next wrong right here will then take over the actions from then on out so basically the only time rung zero is active or let's just say controlling something is when the system is not active whatsoever so it does give it a command to run forward after that which is right here you can see that latching in uh, basically forward now i'm still using a logical latch not a, a not a, a a latch boolean or a la unlatch i'm using a logical latch right which is a logical latch saying okay well if photo i2 is made and photo i1 is not made turn on the forward and latch it in until photo i1 is made then unlatch forward which it will happen right now you see that it latches in the forward command until photo i1 right here is made when photo i1 gets made it unlatches and latches in the reverse command okay so that's how we're actually controlling that and I can show you this uh, with the inputs and outputs as well you can see these inputs and outputs working now when it comes down to it again this is a very easy uh, to comprehend scenario and a very functional uh, scenario to actually have running rather than the function block when it comes to simple conveyor logic or any logic thereof that needs to have different functionality there's a place and uh, uh, I guess a functionality for each of the four programming languages right PLC ladder logic function block sequential function chart and structured text now again you can get by with this in structured text as well uh, not so easy to read um, but it is very functional and you can also do it with uh, a sequential function chart which is slightly easier to read or slightly just the same as ladder logic to read but just as a step-by-step -step scenario now again when we come down to it the function block was a rather big and kind of daunting to uh, look at if you were to look at it from the outside in understanding how the function would work now currently this is not running because I took out the JSR we had here in the prior video if you recall we had the JSR linking to this very one but we built that uh, all this logic hand our step-by-step in that video uh, but again I wanted to show you exactly uh, how simple this was and the logical implementation of thinking what what my uh, PLC language if, if you know, if you're thinking about what language to use inside of your your controls which is better right which is going to be better for the machine to run which is going to be better for the operations which is going to be better for somebody behind you uh, actually reading it and again that goes back to the common themes that we talk about right what is the scope of work okay making sure the scope of work happens the meaning the machine can do its task that it's designed to do and the next thing is going to be funk or the reliability how reliable is that right is the logic going to be reliable through uh, system recoveries uh, through upsets through process upsets through how to start the system initially um, and then it goes back to how easy is it to read right for the person behind you how easy is the the ladder logic or logic thereof um, function block sequential function chart or uh, structure text how easy is that logic to read right and that goes back to the winning principles of PLC programming altogether we all can program this a million different ways if I this logic I just put in is very very simple you could do it 
probably three or four different ways. But when it comes down to it, it would still function the same exact way. Now, again, that goes back to functionality, interpretation, right? How we program. The goal is to have the scope of work of a machine to run and to do its task beyond within that scope, right? And to achieve that within a reliable state of time, a reliable throughout time, right? So not have any kind of failures or upsets or anything like that that it cannot recover from and get back running. Efficiency is all about machine running, running the runability of the machine, right? So when it comes down to it, then you want to work on your, um, you know, how easy is it to read for the actual person behind you or for yourself, right? You may think about this one way and then two years from now, you may come back and look at the logic that you built and be like, well, that's just not practical or I would do it differently now. So again, I'm, I'm showing you all this stuff to, to open your eyes to say, okay, well, which language is better? Uh, which language is, is, you know, functional? What should I do in this atmosphere or that atmosphere? It really all depends on your scope of work, your function, your reliability and your, your, uh, how easy it is, is it to read those three counter th three things added together. And again, those are my interpretations. So please, um, understand that I've been in throughout you know working in automation for quite some time the more information you can give to the the operators the better it is so when it comes down to it but the the key principles that i'm trying to uh, enforce here are, are at least you know relay to you that i use are those three key principles so when it comes down to it hope you got a lot out of this video and you kind of understand the difference between the two and if you haven't seen the video where we we built this please go back and watch it i mean it's very simple very easy. It is a little bit longer, but I wanted to make sure that we relayed the information that we're doing. So with all that said, hope you enjoyed this video. See you guys on the next one.